Hi, welcome back to the Custom Saber Shop on YouTube. My name is Rob, and today I'm going to just walk you through the assembly of the crystal chamber for the uh, the LS6. I understand the same crystal chamber will be utilized in a couple of different uh, Saber models, uh, but it comes as a kit, and uh, like with most kits, there's a couple of little things you need to do to get it to work uh, really, really well, really seamlessly, and I'm going to walk you through what those are. So, uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is prepare our parts. Um, for today, you've got obviously the kit, you've got all the little parts, including a couple of magnets. I'm going to use a pencil, particularly the eraser end, as you can see there. Uh, I'm also going to use this little uh, hobby, hobby knife, something like that. Uh, a Dremel would be really, really useful here. Um, with a, with, I'm going to use a cutting end or, or some kind of fine grinding or sanding end. That's going to become uh, really helpful, but you might be able to get by with just a, with the the hobby knife and uh, of course today I'm going to be using some Gorilla Glue. This works like a crazy glue or a super glue um, but you want to be very very careful and use this very sparingly. You might be able to use other glues. If you're a glue expert pick your uh, glue of choice and let's get going. Now you've read your instructions and you can see how, how everything goes together. That's a great start. Um, here's the parts that we're gonna start with. We're gonna prep. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unthread this completely so you can see. This comes apart in three different uh, segments. Always work on a clean flat surface so you don't lose anything. Uh, the, the instructions recommend that we sand this part. Um, I found that mine right out of the box, obviously you're going to want to make sure it fits with the switch up, fits in there perfectly. You don't want to slide it through this part. You don't need to. Um, it's going to go in there. Mine fits perfectly so I don't need to sand these drums. If yours is a little bit off-centered, you might need to sand those to get those to fit. So that prep work is done. The next thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to glue this crystal in place here and I'm going to set it up right so that it dries while we're doing the other stuff um, because you don't want to wait for glue to dry any more than you need to. Now for these next bits, I'm going to get uber close up um, so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to move the parts that I'm not using out of the way. Uh, now with, with the glue, Here's the trick. If you learn this trick, it's going to save you a lot. I'm going to test it on a piece of paper here. I'm going to use the back of the instruction. To do, I want to be very careful with using the glue. I like using paper just to get it to go. Now, if you're using just a tiny amount of glue, you might actually just be able to get by with that dab. I'll just roll that in the glue a little bit. Um, if you need a little bit more, you can, of course, apply it directly to uh, let's see if I can do this so you can see it. Apply it directly to the air. Just uh, just a little bit. You'll notice I've got three dabs there. I'm going to insert it and I'm going to rotate to get the glue to kind of spread around in there. And then I'm going to sit that, press it down, I'm going to sit that out of the way. Let it dry. Done. Now the next part I want to prep is the uh, switch cap. Now this is supposed to be glued on. Um, you can feel, you can even hear the compression of the switch. Now, I tried my cap. I try everything before I glue things. It's just a good rule. With the cap on, mine doesn't compress. So, if I glue that cap on sitting down there nicely, then when it's dry, my switch is useless. So I do not want to do that. So there's two choices here. I could, I could glue it in a position where it, there's some play so I can actually activate the switch, or what I'm going to do because I want to make sure I've got nice clearance, is I'm going to shave off just a hair. I don't know if I'll be able to do this in a way that you can see it. You want to take your time so that you don't wreck your part, because you're only given one in the kit. So, there you can see a little bit of the plastic shaved off. I'm going to shave a little off. I'm going to test it. Oh, I've got some switch action now. But my uh, I didn't shave it off very evenly, so I'm actually just going to finish the job hear my switch action so that's nice. There we go. Now if I wanted to use a little piece of sandpaper just to kind of finish this off and get that relatively even. Test it again. Make sure it goes on there. Oh, Because I've uh, sandpapered it there's now a little bit of residue inside the hole and it doesn't want to fit. So I'm going to take my knife, scrape out that residue Try this again. Oops. Yeah, that sits down there nice. 
Okay, now that I've shaved this uh, switch cap down to go on there in the actions right, I do not want to go ahead and glue it on there just yet. And the reason is, is this part needs to fit inside here. And with the switch cap on, it can't do that. So I want to put the switch cap on and glue it on after I've got this in place. So uh, we're getting our parts prepped. We're not going to go ahead and glue that just yet. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to uh, get these parts to work together. So this actually, this glass window is going to see if I can get it here without my glued crystal coming out. It's going to actually sit right in here nicely, and so. Always, you know, test fit, practice, take a look at how that fits so you get an idea of uh, how it's supposed to work. It's also supposed to center on these holes, and fit in there, and your switch will go through it. But as you may have noticed by practicing and taking a look around, let's see if I can point to it, there's these uh, little solder dabs right here and here, and there's these little SMD components on the circuit board. Um, and it will not clear those. So obviously that was a, an oversight, um, but we're gonna correct that. And it's fairly simple to do that. Um, with the Dremel, it's gonna be the easiest. You wanna get these parts together approximately, how they're gonna line up. Oh, I forgot to list among my tools, uh, one of my favorite tools, a Sharpie. So I'm basically gonna eyeball where I see those transistors. Let's see if I can do this in a way that you can see what I'm doing. And see where those transistors are and how far they extend. And I'm going to make little marks with my with my sharpie. I don't know if you can see it there. There's these little little marks. That's where my uh, my transistor is going to need to clear here and here. I'll make those a little bit bigger where I'm going to grind it away. I don't want to grind this outer trim there because that shows. And I want to grind away where the solder dabs are. So basically grinding a nice big chunk away from either end there and I'm going to test fit it. Now the way I'm going to do this, actually I'll show you both ways. I'm going to spin up my, my Dremel and I'm going to very carefully grind away with, with the Dremel. Um, the other way is, I mean, you can melt it with a soldering iron too, but then sometimes you get discolorations and I don't like that personally. Is you can carefully do this without chopping your finger. And basically just take your time with your hobby knife. Just work away, shave away bit by bit until you've got the clearance that you need to fit. Uh, that's the long way of doing it. The short way of doing it, I don't know if you can hear me, is to spin up your Dremel. I'm going to test fit that side. I'm going to test fit that side and just see. You know, if my clearance is going to be some of the excess there. Getting closer. Okay, you might be new to a Dremel, but I've been uh, doing it for quite a while. And I do want to point out safety glasses when you're using the Dremel. Uh, also, safety glasses when you're using just a, a hobby knife is a great idea because the tips of these could break off. And if that ended up in your eye, that would be bad news. Um, so, done with my Dremel, I'm just kind of cleaning up the edge. All this white stuff is basically plastic that's been shaved away by the Dremel. I'm just taking a moment to get that all out of the way with my hobby knife. I test fitted this once, but we'll, uh, we'll do it again. This wants to keep rolling over on me. Oops. So what I want is these these legs to go through those little holes. And with anything that's got circuit, circuits on it, you just want to be really gentle. Should, uh, should not have to force anything. There, it pops right in. So the next test fitting, hoping that my glue is dry. Of course not, it doesn't want to come off. So I'm just going to use a bit of a, a little watch screwdriver. I'm just going to pop those out of place. So I want to make sure you understand too that if you don't have a Dremel and you're not able to do what I did here, it is fairly challenging to do what I've done with a hobby knife, but you can, uh, you can just carve away the whole uh, the bevel or basically an angle around the inside bit by bit, just stroke after stroke uh, until things, things clear or fit. Um, the other way, as I mentioned before, is you can take a, a hot soldering iron and you can carefully just 
just dab and melt some of this plastic away. I would, I would do it in very small amounts at a time, and then I would clean it up with the knife to make sure you're getting all that discoloration out there that you might have got with the, with the soldering iron, and you don't want to go too deep, and again, you don't want to damage this, this outer edge here. Um, so there's several different ways of doing what I've done here, but the point is to just take your time and get it to fit. And uh, I've actually taken a little little bit more off right on the corners where those solder dabs are. And uh, and so it, it's going to fit really nicely, and I'm really happy with that now. So that part's prepared. We're ready to move on. So I'm going to show you the way I do it, uh, just to kind of you know do things in, a, in, a, in the proper order or in an effective order. Sometimes it's half the battle, just figuring out what to do first. Uh, so of course you're going to need your... Uh, your battery that doesn't uh, come supplied, uh, it's going to need to go in about that position. And of course, we've got our little magnet here. So here's how I do it. Um, you've got your, your switch piece in there ready to go. And of course, you've got the, uh, you know, the, the battery end there and the LED facing the crystal. Take this little magnet. It comes with two of them. And I'm going to just, I'm just going to try to drop it right in that, that hole because this, uh, this little end is magnetic. Um, sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge to get it to to get it to go right where you want, but there now the little switch, the little magnet kind of fits in that little button. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, is carefully insert the battery so that that magnet stays in place. Now the the magnet actually completes the circuit on the the negative end. The positive end will go forward, so I'm going to go ahead and thread that in here. Not all the way. Leave a little bit of a gap. And of course, you want to make sure your threads are clean. Now you can start to thread that one in. And what you're going to find is as soon as the battery starts to get tight, it's going to want to turn your little circuit board here. So you just need to flatten it on the table, use your fingers to kind of pinch it down, and then finish tightening your battery. And this little circuit will work better because it's pressure contact, you know, if you have this fairly tight. I don't want to damage anything, so you don't want to go too tight. But we'll uh, we've got it in, we're ready for a test. So go ahead and hit the button. It fires up, crystals are bright green, and you get your little blinkies. Hit it, hit it again, you get to blue. Uh, one of these is red, too. There you go. You keep hitting it, and it'll eventually go to red. So di different but button combinations, you can play around with it and figure out um, what you want it to do. Uh, and it's ready to go. Now it's, of course, in the off position. The, uh, the final pieces, of course, there's this plastic sleeve that allows you to actually seat it in the saber. And at this point, now that we know everything works, now we're ready to, uh, to glue on our switch cap. So I want to make sure that my circuit board is, the gap is exactly the same so that my plastic is going to go on nicely. So now I'm going to use just a tiny, tiny bit of glue, like I mentioned before. And even if you want to do as a precaution, just dab a little bit on the paper because that helps you determine how much glue is coming out. You know, you don't want to have a rush of glue flood over your switch and then incapacitate your switch and make it useless. So I've got a tiny dab of glue. My switch goes on. I'm going to give it a good press. So my action's good. I'm happy with that. Toggle it through till it turns off. Now with mine, I actually got this to pressure fit kind of nicely. So it recommends glue. I'm not even going to use the glue because once this thing is in place, there's a, it's a nice pressure fit. I'm happy with that. It's not going to fall out. Uh, so I'm not even going to use the glue on that. So there, here's your crystal chamber. It's working. Whoops, you can slide on your uh, plastic sleeve now. And that's ready to go in your saber. So I hope that's been helpful, just a basic rundown of how to construct your uber awesome crystal chamber for your saber. Thanks again for watching.